Okay, today we are going to talk about 24 things that frugal people do. And we are gonna see if we do them as well so we can see if we're as frugal as other people. On today's Money Article Monday, I found a article that talks about 24 things that frugal people do. So let's see if we do them. Or maybe we, maybe, hey, we could learn something new here. Let's see if we can. But if you are new here on Money Article Monday, we pick a different article or blog about money and we chat about it. I also make videos throughout the week about saving money and leading a simple life. I am also documenting our journey to paying off our mortgage by the year of 2024 and ultimately being financially independent. So if any of that interests you, then make sure you click on that subscribe button. So I've got the article for today. I did find it on msn.com and it's so funny now that when I pull up my Google articles, it just automatically gives me the newest, latest, greatest, you know, personal finance articles. So this one came from Money Talk News and it's 24 Things People, Frugal People Do by Crystal Barton. And it was published on September the 3rd, uh, 2021. So Let's see what she talks about here. She says that many people choose to be frugal for different reasons. Tell me down below in the comments, how did you come about without being frugal? Were you frugal because of necessity? Frugal because you just don't like waste and you don't like spending too much money? Let me know down in the comments below. She says that here, maybe you were raised to live a frugal life so it's second nature to you or perhaps you are consciously frugal and are saving to pay for a house or you have a child about to head off to college. Maybe you simply don't see any other reason to be anything but frugal. For me, I was raised frugally, but I didn't know it to be frugal. And then in my 20s, I completely rejected that idea, that ideal. I did not want to be frugal anymore. I did not want it to be part of who I was growing, or, you know, now. And then as a result of that, I got into major debt. Um, and then finally had a light bulb moment, you know, a breakdown, I'm tired, this is the end of it moment, where I realized what I had known was the smartest way to go about things. So here's the challenge. It says, read the list that follows and see how many frugal things you already do or what new ways you can add to your already frugal lifestyle. Number one, you cut bills where possible. Not all bills can be negotiated, but the ones that can, you negotiate. Yes. <laughs> Call your cable provider and have them lower the bill or better yet, switch to Netflix. I have not had cable in 10 years and it's funny, we went to the beach and they had the cable package on the TV. I still did not actually care to sit down and watch it. It says that if you have a cell phone and you use it exclusively, let go of your landline. Yes. Why do you have a landline? I mean, why? Number two is you meal plan and you eat at home. Yes. So editing Jennifer, hey Jennifer, keep up with these so that we can count how many of these I actually do. I do number one and I also do number two. I have talked to you guys about meal planning. I assure you I have the meal planning video, a much more extensive meal planning video that I'm getting ready to film. So it will be up within the next week or two. So make sure you are stay tuned to that. I have been doing monthly meal planning and cutting my grocery budget over 50% for going on four years now. Um, and it has been the most beneficial thing I have ever done for my family, for my finances, and for just living more simply and not being as stressed out over mealtime. The article says, instead of grabbing something fast while you're out running errands, eat before you leave the house. Yes. <laughs> We always try to eat, even if it's just a, a protein bar, a granola bar, eat something before you leave the house because when you start getting hangry, you most certainly are just like that commercial. You are not yourself. And you will end up going through a drive through of a fast food restaurant that, number one, the prices have been are just gone through the roof. Not that they were cheap before, but ugh, when you eat that stuff, it just, it makes me feel like, like poop. Let me just tell you, if I knew what poop actually felt like, yeah, that'd be weird, but it, it makes me feel like poop. We'll just go there. 
Number three is you look for deals and use coupons. Yes, I love a deal. Now, one thing that frugal people don't do is buy something because they have a coupon or because they have see a deal. They know what they want or need and they wait for a coupon or until they find a deal. Number four, you learn from your mistakes. So far, editing Jennifer, I am four for four. <laughs> I most certainly learned from my mistakes. As I mentioned earlier, in my 20s, I was in major debt and I made a lot of mistakes, a lot. And I still make mistakes today and I don't mind mistakes. And the one thing that I can tell you as, as an adult in, um, in life, so, you know, whether it's with friends, family, uh, in, at, at your job, if you make a mistake, the first thing you should do is own up to it. We're, we're teaching my daughter that now, you know, a lot of the times something that she does is actually an accident. She's an amazing child, but she thinks even though it's an accident that we're going to get mad at her and we don't. But you know, I, I'm trying to teach her or we're trying to teach her that if you make a mistake or you have an accident, tell somebody. The, I mean, if you, if she dropped a pen um, on one of the, the bar stools and I said, well, hey, if you had told me right away, I could have definitely made sure that I got it out. Luckily, it still came out somehow. But, you know, I, the thing you need to do is go ahead and own up to it. People understand that people are going to make mistakes. And if somebody doesn't understand that something is a mistake, an employer or, you know, family, friends, then you know what? Mm, move on. Because everybody makes mistakes. Absolutely nobody is perfect. The article says, it's okay, frugal people aren't perfect. No, we're not, but when mistakes are made, they use it as a lesson learned. I've, I've said this before, mistakes and failures are the biggest points in my life, the biggest markers that I can go back to and remember where my life changed for the better. I was, um, and the most recent one was when I, I filmed the video, my pro my productivity is in the pooper. And you guys pointed out, you guys are the ones who helped me. I'm not gonna get teary. And said, in such a friendly, constructive way, it sounds, Jennifer, like you were on the road to burnout. You know, I was trying to do all these other things, add them in to um, get myself going, but what I didn't realize was I was trying to do too much, putting too much pressure. And it wasn't until I read your comments that I realized that. And one of you gave me the book, um, Getting Things Done. Um, and I am so excited. I've already read through it once. I'm reading through it twice. It's one of those books that you have to read through a couple of times at least before you get started. And it is exactly what I needed. And I don't know what it is. And here we go. I mean, I've already started. I'm already halfway through this tangent. But, you know, I appreciate you guys. And that's just, that's, that's what I needed to say. I appreciate you. Number five, eat leftovers. I've mentioned this before too. It says, for some people, leftovers are off the radar. But this is a simple but important tip to keep your food budget in check. Create meals out of already prepared food. A leftover roast can be shredded and turned into barbecue sandwiches. Cold pizza can be <laughs> refreshed. Some people just like to eat cold pizza. With shredded cheese and other toppings popped into the oven or a toaster oven. Frugal people also make enough food to get two meals out of one. Eating leftovers will save you time and money. Number six is you don't mind buying used things. It says it becomes easy to purchase used items when you realize how much markup gets added to brand new things. So think about this. If you went and bought a, a shirt, let's say at a department store and you spent $29.99 on it and you took it out of that department store, how much do you think if you went to try to resell that shirt, you would get for it? Are you thinking? Maybe three bucks. That right there should make you realize something. The article says, get to know people who work at the local thrift shop and let them know what you are looking for. Use old clothing in a creative way. Add fabric or lace to a pair of pants. Uh, I'm not so sure about adding lace to a pair of pants. It says, when you look at the amount of money you saved, the fact that the item is no longer, or the fact that the item is used is no longer important. Now, there are some things I most certainly will not buy used. 
you know, such as, um, like bedding, I don't know, like pillows, <laughs> mattresses. There are just some things that I have, like, I can't do it, but obviously furniture, anything that can be easily cleaned, then you can do that. But what I've also seen is that, I mean, thrift stores, I don't know that thrift stores, they're doing okay, but with what happened in 2020, I just don't see as much I see more resale stuff happening online through like the Facebook marketplace and stuff. I think that's where things are going versus um, actual brick and mortar stores. Number seven, you remember the saying, see a penny, pick it up. All day long, you'll have good luck. Now, if there's a coin on the ground, heads, tails, you know, left, right, forward, backward, doesn't matter. It's yours. You saw it. <laughs> we have trained our daughter. <laughs> She walks around kind of like this, um, <laughs> and she will find coins. I remember we were in a restaurant. It was so funny, um, and there were these booths, and then there was probably about eight or nine cents, um, probably like three or four different coins uh, on the ground about two feet from this other booth, um, or, and people were sitting there, and she went, ah, and she picked the money up and just took off. We asked, I said, is that yours? And they said, no, so hey, finders keepers. Even if you are wealthy and you see something on the ground, pick it up. <laughs> I mean, just 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 pick it up. Have a change jar. Wipe it off with a little hand sanitizer, a little a little a little 99% alcohol wipe, whatever you want to do to make yourself feel better, but pick it up. Number 8 is that you shop out of need, not as a hobby. Now, I used to shop. I mean, I could have been in the Olympics if it were a hobby. I mean, I was good at it. Yeah, and I wouldn't stop. I've talked about this before. I actually felt bad if I left a store empty-handed. I felt like I had been defeated and I had to go to other stores. And I didn't, um, if I didn't have a certain, even if I found one thing, I felt defeated. It was the weirdest thing I've ever felt. Um, but now I only shop out of need and I kind of just replace those, that hobby with something better. Um, this, the article says there isn't a long-term reward in spending money on shopping. However, there is a long-term reward when it comes to saving money. I actually really like that saying. Number nine is you don't buy a gym membership. Now, if you have a gym membership and you use it, great. What you will find is that lots of surveys show that the percentage of people who actually have gym mem memberships, the blah, 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 don't actually use them. And I had plenty of gym membership and I do not, will not. I think a lot of people when the gyms were closed realized what they could do at home um, and felt, and you realize how uncomfortable a lot of people feel at gyms, um, especially if you're new or, I think that's a lot of the problems. Like if somebody really, you know, intentionally wants to work out and they maybe aren't comfortable with themselves or comfortable with using the equipment correctly or you're standing there and you can't get the stupid treadmill up and running you feel like an idiot and you feel like the girl next to you in the cute workout outfit the cute ponytail that's really super high and the really cute shoes that's going 50 bazillion miles an hour you feel uncomfortable you feel me <laughs> i mean obviously i've been there done that so i mean what i realized was i enjoy going outside and running but what i also realized was how much free workout stuff there is online, on YouTube. Um, you know, I love Yoga by Cassandra. Uh, starts with a K if you're interested. Um, I like Boho Beautiful workouts. She does yoga and Pilates. Um, if you're looking for a really good Pilates kind of yoga and you do want to pay for an app with somebody who actually is really good and and the workouts are short they're great for moms or anybody busy melissa wood health i think that her app cost about ten dollars a month and i had that for a long time but i just found that there was so much more i could do in my own time that i didn't have to spend gas or car mileage um, to have a gym membership number 10 is that you trade services with friends Editing Jennifer, this is not one that I do. <laughs> that don't, I mean, it's just one of those like bartering things that I don't know that a ton of people do this. It says maybe you can trade babysitting services so you can go grocery shopping alone or go out with your husband for the evening. Trading services is free and rewarding at the same time. You are helping others while saving money. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, I guess there are some services that people trade, but uh, I, I just, I guess that's just one of the things that I don't do. So I'm nine out of 10 so far. I don't think that's a bad average. Number 11, you take your lunch to work. Yes, that is now me. Now this was not me for a long time. I spent a lot of money on takeout lunch because I didn't like leftovers. This says you will be surprised in the amount of money you save by bringing lunch from home. Learn to say no to lunch orders at work. I mean, the what I've realized from ordering out at work is if you're getting it delivered, it's gonna be soggy by the time it gets there or wilted, let's say if you get a, a salad. Um, if you go out to lunch, by the time you go out to lunch, sit, eat, and come back, you are, you know, it's an hour and a half usually out of your day. Then whatever you've eaten has so much extra, you know, butter, oil, whatever it is that they put in it, even if it's you think it's healthy, that you feel like a lump on a log. And uh, what you actually want to do when you come back is take a nap. So your productive hours are gone. That's what I found about eating out for lunch on a work day. Number 12 is that you keep track of all of your bills. The article says, other than seeing if there are any bills you can reduce, find out if you can get a discount for putting your bills on an auto pay program. Frugal people look for every possible way to save money and auto pay is definitely an easy way to go. Now, I have not ever seen a bill where I can get a reduction or a company where I can get a reduction if I do auto pay. Have you guys? I don't like auto pay. Um, and I, I say that because companies make mistakes and I would rather be in control of what um, comes in and goes out of my account rather than it automatically. Now, if it's a uh, a subscription like for Netflix then I, that's you know something that comes out this the same but I do not auto pay any of my utilities uh, I don't even auto pay my internet I don't auto pay my cell phone um, and I don't do that because I want to make sure that the billing is correct um, that they haven't raised it without me knowing because oftentimes they will do that um, there are a lot of times when People, I guess, put it something on auto pay, and then it's if they put it on auto pay, it's out of sight, out of mind. I would rather touch it, and um, I still keep track of all of my bills. I just do it manually through my budgeting system, through my monthly paycheck to paycheck slash envelope budgeting system. And I am going to do an updated video on that as well. It's all being planned. I just got to find the perfect time, lighting, everything to be able to do it. But yes, I do keep track of all of my bills, I, but I don't, I don't prefer auto pay. Number 13 is you use a grocery list and you buy only what is on that grocery list. I'm laughing because the video I just did last week actually talked about um, the bad habits I had grocery shopping and how I now save over 50%. Um, and one of the bad habits was using my grocery list as a minimum. Like we have to at least get these things, Jennifer, whatever else you get is fine. But as long as you get these things, then you can go ahead and make what you intended to make next week. Rather than using it as a maximum, like this is all you can buy, I used it as a minimum. Um, but now, I pretty well go by my grocery list unless there's something that I realize I need that I didn't put on there, which can happen, or I see something that is on sale that I use that's a regular pantry staple, then I will go ahead and pick something like that up. This is becoming more intentional with your money. It's easier to do when you only buy what's on your list. A note, if you spot a stock up deal on an item you use regularly, take advantage of that. I swear I did not read that prior to, um, prior to saying that exact same thing. Number 14 is you are a DIYer now. So if editing Jennifer is keeping track, so far I am, um, I'm not going to say that I'm, I'm this anymore. I'm going to say I've already gotten 12 out of 14. So that's where I'm at so far. But honestly, I have tried to DIY in the past and tell me if you guys have noticed this, but you know, with my daughter's Halloween costume or whatever it may be, what I've noticed is it's costing more to buy the stuff to do the DIY whether you're repainting something, you're sanding it down, you've got to buy all the tools and the stuff to do it. Um, 
I'm sure there are t things that you could save money on and a lot of people probably know those things but what I'm noticing more is that to go out and buy fabric to buy to make something or um, anything from the craft store to get everything you need is now costing more than going out and purchasing that thing purchasing that thing already made this one kind of goes into the last one number 15 is you know that time is money and if you're if it's gonna take you you know two weeks to fix something that you could have paid somebody to fix within two hours then you've wasted more money in time trying to fix it this is in some cases ignore the previous tip I assure you I didn't read this prior <laughs> paying for a service instead of doing it yourself is sometimes more cost-effective people are skilled in different areas if that leaky faucet is now a water fall that is unstoppable it's time to call a plumber or something that you keep repairing and you can't seem to get it all fixed it could have cost you less money in the first place to call a professional and have them do it number 16 you buy in bulk when the unit price is cheaper as long as it's a non-perishable or you um consume it regularly so always the the thing that you need to when you're looking at um wherever you are, uh, a grocery store for instance, and you see, uh, use a, a bottle of barbecue sauce, okay? And you see a, a 10 ounce bar bottle of barbecue sauce. And then you see a 14 ounce bottle of barbecue sauce and it says, uh, you know, three ounces or four ounces more free. What you actually need to look at, this may look like a better deal, but if you look at the unit price, so you'll say it'll say 4.99, but it'll say, I don't know, 40 cents per ounce. And this one over here will say, you know, uh, $2.99, um, it'll, but it'll be 30 cents per ounce. You need to look at the fine print and that ounce or that unit price. Because even though this may look like a better deal, maybe it's a buy one, get one free or whatever it may be, that unit price is the actual amount that you need to look at. 40 cents per ounce versus 30 cents per ounce. You wanna buy the one that's 30 cents per ounce. Number 17 is you repair things. Doing a little research on repairing versus replacing may save you a lot of money. Again, replace the rubber piece, not the whole faucet. It's much cheaper. An old lawnmower could last for many more years by changing the spark plugs and filters. Explore repair options before buying a replacement. Now, I think this rule, um, we still do it. However, it is becoming more and more not possible. Um, I don't know what the better word would be, but essentially planned obsolescence is what's happening. And when these things are being made, they are being made so cheaply that they are not going to last. Um, and they're caught, the parts that repair them are actually cost more than sometimes replacing the entire item itself, which is super sad because it's so wasteful and it's done on purpose. That's the even more difficult part to understand. Number 18 is you find ways to entertain at home instead of going out every weekend, renting a movie, watching it at home instead of taking the whole family to the movies will save you a lot of money. I haven't been in the movies in eight, nine years, maybe more. Um, and I just, I don't know, I'd rather, I'd rather stay home. And we prefer doing things, you know, at our home or having people over or hanging out on the patio with a snack and a radio, the radio going, um, then, then going out. Um, maybe in the old days, the olden days, as Peppa Pig says, um, you know, going out was the thing to do, but it was so expensive and it is getting so much more expensive Oh my gosh, I could go off on a huge tangent, but this inflation thing, hmm. Number 19, you aren't married to brands, meaning you don't have to buy the ragu or the prego or the brilla or the rouse spaghetti sauce. You're just fine with the Aldi brand. This says, after comparing ingredients, often the store brand has the same ingredients as a major brand. Frugal people are willing to give the store brand a try. What my husband noticed or told me one time, actually, we were looking at, we were had like a congestion years ago, like cold, allergy, whatever it was. And I picked up the name brand, you know, whatever it was, the cough suppressant. He said, look at the store brand. And I turned the both of them around and they were the exact same ingredients and the the store brand was you know four or five dollars less and i thought 
No way. I had never considered doing that. I just assumed, and you know what they say about assumptions, um, that the store brand was worse ingredients and wouldn't make me feel better. Come to find out, it's the same stuff. Number 20, you are always looking at ways that you can be more frugal. You know what? If you're subscribed to this channel, this is you. You can definitely check this one off the list. It says frugal people are always listening and trying new things, challenging themselves to save even more. The hunt for savings is just exi as exciting as savings itself. Yes, I have said this, being frugal is fun. It is a challenge and I enjoy it. Just going out and buying something, you know, for the sticker price of it is no fun. If I can get more money off of it, again, not buy it just because it's a discount, but buy it because I need it, that is so much fun to me and I, it's just, it's a thrill. Frugal is fun. Number 21, you don't buy stuff to impress people. This is absolutely me. I, but for, for years, for all my 20s, I bought stuff to impress people. I bought cars to impress people. I bought clothes to impress people. I bought LASIK eye surgery to impress people with myself minus my glasses, which, God, thank goodness they started making glasses that looked better uh, than they used to. Mm. Anyway, this is personal finance author Dave Ramsey has a saying, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like, or as I like to say, we don't even know. Um, I love that saying. It is a great saying. And the thing is, when I see somebody out trying to impress somebody or I see somebody young and I see them, I can see it, I can actively see it, it breaks my heart, their trepidation around people or their worry about people judging them, I, I say, I, I literally try to say outside out loud, they don't care. The people around you don't care. I, I can see it in your mind racing right now. You're, you're worried about what other people are thinking. They don't care. <laughs> you are overthinking something that does not matter. And if they want to judge you, let them judge. You be you, be authentically yourself, and please stop it. Because I just know that pain and that worry that I did. But being frugal gives you the license to finally be like, Pfft, I don't care what you think. If you don't like it, you're not living my life. And I'm not worried about what you're doing. What you're doing is not affecting me. Number 22 is you turn unwanted or unused items into cash. Now I used to do this. I don't do this so much anymore because it's a time thing. Like I will still, I became a minimalist. So I got rid of things that were unwanted or unused. So if I now, and now if I get something that's unwanted or unused and I have it, I have this need to um, give it, I guess, and uh, give it to somebody who will find it useful um, versus selling it. Now, if I've got something I can sell that's you know larger or I would actually get a substantial amount for, then yes, I will do that. Um, but this is decluttering is a gold mine when you turn your unwanted items into cash. Yes, when you first do your decluttering, you know what? Try to make some money off of that stuff because when you look around your house, there's another saying that says, you see all that stuff? It used to be money. Number 23 is you start a new good habit every year. The article says frugal people vow to start a new habit of saving or spending less every year. For instance, challenge yourself to stop buying individual water bottles and use re reusable bottles for one year. If your original habit was to buy two bottles of water per day at $2 a bottle, you will save $1,460 in one year. Now that the reusable bottle is a habit, move on to other ways to save. Eliminate paper towels, use rags instead, of, uh, instead or time your showers to save on water and heating costs. The way I think about being frugal and being minimal is that over time you become more and more. Okay, so don't go all, you know, all in all at once because oftentimes that could backfire. And so what you start out doing is um, a little bit at a time, a little bit as you go. Um, so that what happens is you start building on it. When you become more minimal and you get rid of a little bit of this, what, when you start decluttering, 
you'll notice that over time you get more comfortable decluttering other things. So things when you originally originally began decluttering, you were like, ah, not so sure I can get rid of that. You no longer care. You just you're you're like what was my uh, my worry about it in the first place? So start out doing little things. Yeah, I love this the thing of starting out with one habit because when you try to put um, three or four new habits all at once into effect, um, it's hard to do. And the last one is number 24. You plan for the future and you set obtainable goals. Frugal people are always working towards specific goals. They know where they plan on being in five years. Create a five-year plan, then break the plan down into doable steps. You can do this. Being frugal is a lifestyle, a conscious choice to live below your means. Once you have become accustomed to living frugally, it's almost impossible to spend money about without thinking about it first. Yes, it's, it's almost hard. You almost get to the point where when you walk through a store, <laughs> you you pick things up and you, you know, you're, you're really excited about it at first, but then you end up putting it back every single time because your mind, I don't know, your mind thinks about things differently. Um, so I, I think that, yes, setting your goal and knowing where you're going, but the biggest thing about setting a large goal is you have to break it down into smaller pieces. Um, you know, for us, the large goal is paying off our house by the year of 2024. So that was the goal. So how did we break that down? Well, we went in and we figured out how much we could, you know, that wasn't initially the result, right? We said the, the goal started out, we want to pay our mortgage off early, okay? And then what we did was back into it. Well, how much money can we put out of our budget into towards our mortgage every month while still you know living comfortably uh having some of what we want and um also putting towards retirement and once we were able to determine what that amount was we put it in a calculator and the oddest thing happened it came out originally it was like 20 in the year 2025 and this was two years ago we thought we can pay our mortgage off in seven in, in you know by 2025 what we never thought about it it all started from that original goal and then once we started making more as as your income increases usually when you have a goal and you start heading towards it the goal gets to you sooner you pick up momentum and then we figured out that we could pay it off by the year of 2024 and at this point it could possibly be sooner than that we're so excited but again, you got to set it off into small goals. So each month is our small goal. You know, how much can we save? How much more can we make to put towards the house? So I think if I'm looking, editing Jennifer can pretty much figure this out for me, but I think I'm 21 out of 24. So I think that's pretty good. What was your number? What's your score? Um, tell me down below. I would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for more videos.